If you're interested in doing a UEFI installation, make sure you find a motherboard that supports it. The motherboard should say EFI plug and play. For more information, go to UEFI.org for a list of compatible motherboards for UEFI. Newegg didn't have the three terabyte drives in stock when I did this video, so I went to my local Best Buy and I paid $199 for the MyBook Essentials three terabyte version. Went home, used a screwdriver, cracked the case open, and installed it into my system. Once it's ready to go, I connected my external DVD, started the system up, and got directly into the BIOS. Now in the BIOS, I used my arrow keys and I went to Advanced. Once I was in Advanced, I dropped down to Drive Configuration, and this is where it gets a little tricky. If you're using a new Advanced Format Drive, use Native and AHCI. If you're using an older drive, use either legacy and IDE or native and IDE. It's different based on each of the different drives that are out there. So again, this is the, the hardest part of the installation. Either use AHCI or use IDE and legacy. Once you're done, hit escape, right arrow over to the boot drive, make sure that your CD-ROM, this is the external DVD, that's the only way that this can work, and make sure that it's at the top drop down to UEFI boot and change it from disable to enable. Once you're done with that, hit F10. Save your BIOS settings by clicking on yes and the system will restart. As Soon as the system restarts, you're going to hit F10, which is the boot menu. And then you're going to choose UEFI colon your drive name here for the installation. Now you can see I have two here. I have the three terabyte drive because I've done this over and over again and I have my DVD drive. Yours must say UEFI colon your drive name here for it to continue. Otherwise you'll do a BIOS boot and have to start all over. Once you're done hit the hard enter key on the keyboard and then as soon as you do that start hitting the space bar. For some reason the space bar seems to be the only way to get this thing to boot. They should have just labeled it the any key. Once you're done Windows will load into memory and start the installation process. Uh, so stick with us. You got about eight more minutes left, uh, and then you'll see the completed UEFI boot. Choose your language, time format, and keyboard and click on next and then click on install now. Now this is the most important gateway. If you've chosen UEFI and you have a GPT disk in your system, it will go through and complete the installation. If not, if you've done the BIOS boot, then it will give you an error when working with your partitions. Click on accepting the license terms and click on next. Click on custom if you're using an upgrade disk. And now let's look at the disks. You can see I have a disk that I've already used before. Now I can go through and click on next if I want. And it will tell me that, for example, this one um, has the uh, previous version of Windows in it. Um, I'm going to click on cancel. If you're using the upgrade, you want to leave that version there because it will check on the upgrade disk to see a prior version of Windows. For me personally, since I'm doing this over and over again, I'm just going to delete the partition off. Now, depending on if you've installed this on another disk before, uh, you may or may not see the 100 megabyte system partition, but you will see the MSR, the, this is the reserved partition. Do not change this, leave it alone. And if you don't have a 100 megabyte system partition, don't worry about it. Choose the installation uh, on the proper partition. It should show it's a DP GPT disk and then click on next. Windows will go and expand the files. Of course, we cut a lot of the time out of there for this. So it will go through, install the features. Uh, then afterwards, uh, it will do at least one reboot. It will go through and complete the installation. Don't make any uh, changes to the, the DVD. Just leave it in the, 
in the DVD player. Uh, don't hit any keys. This is all automated. It will do everything it's supposed to do. Um, you will not save any time on the booting. Remember, most of the motherboards that you're going to be uh, able to install UEFI on have a BIOS as a primary boot and then UEFI uh, as a transition or handoff. So as you can see on the screen now, it's booting into BIOS and then BIOS after it checks and goes through post will say, okay, now hand off to UEFI and go through and do the installation. You can see it's getting into the, the shell here and then it hands off to Windows, which is installed as UEFI. Uh, my, uh, my three terabyte drive did about 45 seconds for the boot. And I remember about 15 seconds of that was for post. So starting in 2011, as we start to see companies like Intel and MSI delivering and manufacturing UEFI uh, primary motherboards, we will start to see uh, increases in performance. And I could easily see with an SSD drive getting this down to 15 seconds or so. Remember, I'm using a three terabyte Western Digital Caviar green drive, and I'm still getting 45 seconds. Uh, it's going to update the registry settings. Again, it's booting for the first time, and then we will go through and complete the installation. We'll be right back. Windows will now reboot. Again, it does it three or four times during the installation. Don't press any keys while it's doing it. Don't remove the DVD. Just leave it in there till the process is complete. Uh, again, the, the booting takes about a minute during the installation each time, and then it should take about 45 seconds afterwards. Uh, once it checks video performance and starts the uh, setup process, uh, you'll have to enter in your name. Choose a name that coincides with either one you've used before or your Windows Home Server username. Makes it easier. You can always change it later on. Uh, remember, uh, the uh, computer name is also important. Click on Next. Uh, I'm skipping the password for now because I want to try boot times, but you'll enter in a password. Uh, also, you can uh, mess with the product key. If you were doing a upgrade, you would enter the upgrade key. If not, choose Recommended Settings. Go through and you can see I do the time here. Uh, time will match the BIOS. And then Windows Home 7 Premium will boot up. Uh, again, you can do this with any upgrade disk. You can do this with any of the Windows 7 installations, uh, but it will go through and bring you up. Now, you're probably going to, depending on your motherboard, have to insert uh, a CD at this point or a DVD that includes your drivers. So you'll spend a little bit of time now working on drivers for your network. That should be the first one that you do. Most of the hardware inside Windows 7 and inside your, your modern day computers will go out and find the right hardware for installation, but you need to get that network driver in there first. So I'd probably insert the DVD, go through and install the network drivers, possibly the audio drivers if you're using the integrated audio, and then go from there. Once you do that, since of course you're seeing the screen here, uh, then it will go through and get uh, any additional video drivers and things like that that it needs and expect probably between four and 500 megabytes of download uh, for Windows to update itself depending on how long it's been. Remember, it's been a year since Windows 7 has been uh, updated and released, so you're going to have a little bit of download going on. Thank you for being a part of this. You can see here that I have all of my basic information. You can put it on pause and check out some of the stats, but I do have a GPT partition three terabyte drive as my boot drive through UEFI. Uh, check back with us. I'll have some more videos coming out soon.